So now let's move on to our second posterior fossa brain tumor, which is pilocytic astrocytoma. This constitutes about 3-6% of all brain tumors, and is the most common astrocystic tumor. There is a 50-50 chance of happening in a male and female, and usually occurs in astrocyte areas such as the cerebellum brainstem and hypothalamic and optic pathways. 60% of these tumors are located in the posterior fossa and it can also be known as JPA, which is juvenile pilocytic astrocytoma. And again, the symptoms are the triad, as I have mentioned above, and also ataxia. So this has the general symptoms of posterior fossa tumors. These two sagittal MRI images, both of which are contrast enhanced, demonstrate the juvenile pilocytic astrocytoma. On the image on the left, you can see the fine septi in the cystic portion of the tumor, and also note the hydrocephalus involving the lateral and the third ventricle. On the right-hand side, above the UCLA Bruin sign, please note that there is contrast enhancement of the more nodular mass-like portion of the JPA. This is a rare case of bleeding into a JPA. The CT scan on the left-hand side of the screen demonstrates the hyperdensity that is consistent with hemorrhage. And above the UCLA Bruin slide, the right-hand side of the screen, you can see that the tumor does arise from the cerebellar hemisphere. Also, please note the marked hydrocephalus. Ependymomas arise from the wall of the ventricles, and these are most often seen in the fourth ventricle. And hence, they may extend into the cervical spine. Ependymomas occur more frequently in females than in males, and 85% of these tumors are benign. In adults, these are most often supratentorial and 20% intraparenchymal. Ependymomas enhance less than the medulloblastomas. They are midline, non-cystic, and on CT scan, hypodense. And the symptoms again are the triad and ataxia. And here are just some examples of some lo local symptoms, like such as temporary bl color blindness, temporary memory loss, and insomnia. But remember that these symptoms are only onset by the location of the tumors. So these are more rare symptoms than the triad and ataxia. The CT scan on the left-hand side demonstrates the midline mass. You can see the hyperdensity surrounding the lesion and also hyperdensity within the lesion. You remember that 50% of ependymomas do have hemorrhage and calcification. On this non-contrast CT scan, we don't know if we have hemorrhage here or calcification. It could be one or the other. But do note that there is marked hydrocephalus involving the lateral ventricles and the third ventricle. On the right-hand side of the screen above the UCLA Bruin sign, we see the ependymoma. Note how much of that posterior fossa is just filled with tumor. This is pretty dramatic. And again, you can see the hydrocephalus involving the third and the fourth ventricles. Also note that the cerebellum has been compressed and somewhat displaced towards the tentorium. Brainstem gliomas arise between the aqueduct of Silvius and the fourth ventricle. Just less than 10% of all intracranial tumors are brainstem gliomas in children. The morbidity of gliomas is high related to the spatial limitations of the posterior fossa, and I refer you back to Joseph's discussion earlier in this podcast. Brainstem gliomas arise from mutated astrocytes. Remember that astrocytes are involved in structural support, nutrition, and insulation. So for symptoms of brainstem glioma, we have the two general posterior fossa brain tumor symptoms of the triad and ataxia. And we also have two other lo local ones, which include the inability to control facial structure and seizures. On this slide, the non-contrast CT scan demonstrates a mass within the brain stem. And referring to the MR of the UCLA Bruin sign, you can see the mass arising from the brain stem. You can see that it does impinge upon vital structures within this region. Please note that this is not associated with hydrocephalus, as were the other tumors that we discussed earlier in this podcast. So in conclusion, the four main posterior fossa tumors are astrocytoma, which we refer to as brainstem glioma, pilocytic astrocytoma, also known as juvenile pilocytic astrocytoma, pendomoma, and medulloblastoma, which we'll refer to now as a peanut. So now we see an uh, acronym, APE, peanut. And if you can't see this, here's a visual of the acronym. APE plus a peanut equals the four most common posterior fossa tumors. Simple?
please visit our pediatric imaging wiki site, http pediatricimaging.wikispaces.com for additional podcasts and also interesting pediatric and adult cases in all imaging specialties.